all right guys so welcome to today's video in today's video i would like to explain to you how cinematic moves work all right so how you're able to influence your camera while preparing or while doing a move while performing a move all right so let me just um yeah get up some some reference right here so come up with some reference so that you guys know what i'm talking about okay so you guys probably know the game world of stands all right and especially so that, that's just one thing i remember okay so there is this stand called weather report and it really really in my opinion has perfected that uh, cinematic those cinematic effects all right so if you don't know what i'm talking about then just look up word of stands weather report showcase and then you'll see what i'm talking about okay so i have the feeling that the thing i'm now going to show you is also yeah, it's also possible via the moon animator okay i wasn't really able to find any videos which which really show that once you once you animate your camera movement instead of moon animator that this camera movement will also adapt to your player you're playing the animation onto via script all right so i don't think that this works but i might be wrong all right so if i'm wrong with that so if i'm wrong with the moon animator after exporting an camera animation let's say so um that this animation is not able to be played on the player or or that, or that the that the play of this animation does not really really need to the camera being moved around and correct all right so, and then then correct myself then correct me okay that being said let's begin with this video all right so i'm gonna show you another method besides that moon animator method which might work but which might also now work all right so i have made a very very basic move right here okay and this tutorial is not about the move uh, about the move itself the move right here is just yeah it's just here to deliver an example okay so as you can see the move itself is just a yellow sphere which appears and which moves forward and while performing this move you have some camera movements right here okay and this tutorial let me explain it again is just there to explain the concept of camera movements so if you if you ask in the comment section yeah so how i'm able to move the camera like this or like this you know so then then you've clearly not 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 understood the concept because once you understand the concept you're able to move it by yourself all right so Let's quickly just go over this move, so how this works. So we have this user input service right here, which is able to detect user inputs. Input begin, as the name suggests, detect when an input was done. And um, our key right here is the Q key, as you can see. So we are checking whether the Q key was pressed or not. And if it has been pressed, then we want to fire server a remote event, which sits inside of this replicated storage. And the task is to do fireball, all right? And then we have another script inside of here, inside of the server script service, which refers to this fireball remote event and has this on server event right here, okay? So this event fires once you have fire server this remote event. And once this on server event goes on, we receive the player who has fire server and the task, all right? And if the task is to do fireball, then we are going to fire to all clients by referring to this fireball remote event and performing this fire all clients means the script now fires back to the client and this with the task to visualize the fireball and with the player as a second argument and this the second argument right here is, is literally the perform of this attack all right so that's important when you want to visualize the attacks on the client so you have to specify who the performer is otherwise you end up you end up um every player performing the same move all right its own so that's that's not something you want to do all right down here we are referring to the fireball and then having this on client event okay as the name suggests this fires when you fire client this remote event and what we receive is the task we're supposed to do and the performer as i've already explained so if the task is to visualize the fireball then let's let's skip this part because this is now important when it comes to those cinematic movements but down here we are creating a part which is then called fireball which has uh, new yellow as a brick color, which is neon, can collide as false. So you can just read them out if you want to. And we are putting this fireball in front of us and we are destroying this fireball after four seconds. And then we are adding a body velocity inside of it, which just, well, which, which, you know, which makes it move forward. So if you want to make this move faster, then you just have to change this number to anything higher. All right. Now, 
That's just a short description of this move. The topic of today's video is not the move itself, but those cinematic movements. So how do they work? Okay, so when you visualize those moves on your client, then you end up having a on client event, right? You maybe, but maybe not. I've, I've even seen people using modules, uh, module scripts to to you know for for each attack. So that's something you can do as well. But just make sure that you have a performer so that you have specified who the performer is and that you have specified who your local player is, all right? But that's that's commonly the case, so you can just refer to the local player normally. But um, you really need to know who the performer is, that's important. Now, before you do all of this attack stuff, so it re really depends on what you want to do. If you want the camera to, to, uh, to, to move to somewhere before performing the move, then you have to add this if statement before the move happens, all right? And it is even recommended to add a short delay to it, otherwise, the camera will move while the attack is being done, all right? And you just end up having, having some uh, having some animations which do not match with each other, all right? So if you need to use delays, then use them. Let me now go to the cinematic movement right here. So we need an if statement, okay? And this if statement, it is going to make clear that the player who is currently... Uh, yeah, who, who's currently the owner of the script right here. So you have to imagine that this local script right here is inside of... Is inside of every player so every player instead of inside of the server all right and we have to know whether one of those players right here who has now or yeah who was now fired no <laughs> my god so um yeah so the player who has now take uh, needs to take care of this on client event so that this player is the performer that's the one thing we have to know so is this player the performer if that's the case, so there's only one performer, if that's the case, then we want this cinematic stuff to happen to him. Alright? If you if you have a target, and if you want the target to also see that camera stuff, then you can also add this if statement by, you know, target, and then game player's local player, alright? Obviously, we do not have a target right here, therefore, we just leave it as it is right here, okay? So, let me repeat it again. You need to know who the performer is, and you need to compare whether the, the local player, so the owner of the script right here, is the performer itself that's important because we only want this cinematic movement right here to happen to the performer not to every player okay that's important now when this is true everything else right here follows so we have a variable which refers to our current camera and then we have another variable called cam cam p all right so you you could you could mistake it as camp but my intention was to call this camp P, P for part. So we are creating a part right here. That's important. So let me let me really try to show you what this is about. So let me turn down the transparency so that you guys really understand how this works, okay? And let me disable this tween so that you guys understand more. So we have a part, okay? And this part is first of all anchored, can call it as false, and the transparency is, usu is usually set to 1. And I'm going to show you why later on. But the most important thing is that it is anchored, can call it as false, and that it has a C frame, okay? And this C frame is very important because this C frame determines the place where your camera is going to move to. Alright? So you need to you need to know how to use C frames. Otherwise, you'll you're doomed, okay? So practice your C frame knowledge if you don't have any. So it is it is something which is which is easy to learn, okay? So we are using our humanoid root part C frame. And I'm multiplying it with another C frame, which just moves it a certain way. Okay, I think in this case it is um, it is next to us. Yeah, next to us and, and a little bit up. Okay, and this third C frame right here is there to rotate this part. So we want to we want this to be rotated a certain way. So by 90 degrees on the Y axis, and um, yeah. If you don't know how this how this looks like, then just experiment around with it. All right. So that's that's the thing I have done. I have done. When I was about to learn C frames, so just just enter some random numbers, experiment around, and then you'll know which which field right here moves the part. Um, yeah, so this is the X, Y, and Z and Z axis, as you can see up here. All right, so just practice it, and then you'll you'll get to know about this. All right, let me play this. So we have just disabled um, that the camera is going to adapt to this part's position. We we have disabled that so that I can show you. How this looks okay so as you can see this is our first camera part this is the second one but we are going to talk about the second one later so this is the first one okay and 
you now might know why I want this thing to be transparent because you could possibly when you move your camera into it so you you then could possibly see see the part all right and that's something we do not want to happen therefore we want this to stay at one now this part is also deleted after three seconds and um yeah one more important thing is that you set the camera type to scriptable because this makes player unable to move around with the camera and you know when a player is able to move around with the camera they can possibly interrupt this cinematic movement right here that's the reason why we are doing this all right now let's move on with the most important part so we have now set up a camera part that's that's how i call them so a camera part it is now in position it is anchored can collide as false it is transparent and it is going to be deleted after three seconds all right we have set the camera type to scriptable and now we have to move our camera to this camera parts c frame okay so how does this work i love to use tweens so tween service right here you could you could just also say cam the c frame and then equals uh camp c frame you know so you could do that as well but it doesn't really look that good to be honest but if you have a move where it really suits to it then you can of course do it all right so it is really up to you have to you have to experiment around i don't know what kind of move you're creating okay now let's move on with the tween service i've already explained the tween service in many of my videos but let me just quickly go through this all right so the tween service uh requires an instance which is right here which is our camera and what the tween service does is that every instance has some kind of property all right so the camera for example has has the c frame as a property and some other properties as well but the c frame right here is only relevant to us but um for the sake of understanding tweens i'm gonna come up with a different example all right so when we talk about parts for example the port has many many properties so you can determine the transparency the material the brick color the size the C frame, the position, the rotation, whatsoever. All right, and what we want to do is that let's let's talk about the transparency. So we want this part transparency right here, which is currently at zero, means it is visible, to go to one. Okay. Now we have two options to handle this. We can we can just declare the parts transparency. So so th this is just to explain it. All right. So this is nothing um, relevant to this whole. This whole stuff right here this is just there to uh to, to explain the tween service all right so we could just declare it like this okay so it, it would immediately go from zero to one and you will see that so there is no transition in between and it looks awful to be honest all right so back then so i've started scripting in 2015 2016 um back then there, there, there was no tween service so how, how did we handle that so how did we create that transition you've literally used an for i loop and um, we have set this so transparency and then part transparency plus one plus i divided by 10 all right so that's when how we have created transparencies back then and now thankfully we have this tween service right here which which creates this kind of transition okay so the tween service creates a transition from an instance's properties current status to the goal status it wants to achieve all right and now let me explain this once more on the example of our camera so we have the camera as an instance and we want to change the c frame as a property but we'll get to this later so we now need something called tween info and tween info is 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 just the setting so the setting of your tween right here the first argument is the time in which this tween happens so the transition is going to take 0.5 seconds all right now the easing style right here is linear and the easing direction is out there is a whole dev hub article on how linear looks like exponential looks like or other easing styles look like and easing directions as well i don't really know how the others look like but you can just check it out for yourself all right but i love to use them the third argument right here is is the goal we want to achieve so the goal property in this case we have declared that the c frame is uh, supposed to be at our camera part c frame multiply it with an angle and this angle just just makes the camera face down onto those events all right so onto the player and uh yeah and that's it all right after you have set up this tween you want to play it and this tween right here is the part where your camera moves all right so we have the current status of our camera c frame which is which is that the c frame is facing to where the head faces and then 
we are declaring the C frame to the camera port C frame multiplied with some other C frame angle stuff. All right. After this tween is done, um, yeah. After this, after this tween is done, your your camera is is um yeah is moved to where your your camera's port is. All right. Now, same thing happens down here. So this is the second movement. So we have this if statement once, uh, once again. And I have set the camera type again to scriptable, but that's not really necessary because we still have it to we still have it at scriptable up here. So we have this camera right here as a variable. We have the second camera port, which is now behind our player and a little bit more up. We're destroying this port after three seconds. We have this tween right here once again. All right, and this tween just, uh, you know, declares that the C frame of the camera equals the second camera port C frame multiplied with the same angle right here as well. All right, so this minus math dot red uh, twenty just makes the camera face down onto onto those events and onto the player. And T two completed is um, when this when this tween right here is completed. So after 0.5 seconds, then we want to wait one more second after restoring the camera. That's important. So after every cinematic uh, action right here, you have to restore the camera. Otherwise, the camera will stay where it was where it was left with. All right, and that's that's nothing you want to do. All right. So you have to set the camera type to custom and the camera C frame back to the performers characters hats C frame. All right. So let me go through this once again. And I hope that this was helpful to you, alright? So, first camera part, second camera part. I forgot to set the transparency to this back to 1. And, yeah guys, so that's it, alright? So I hope, that was, I hope that this was helpful, guys. If that, if, that, if that was the case, then please leave a like, subscribe, share this video with all of your friends. Leave me feedback in the comment section, guys. Take care and see you in the next video.